suboptimal, ranked 29th in the NFL. Des Bryant wants back in, says he can still move the sticks. However, Jerry. Every team doesn't have a true number one receiver. Those guys, it just absolutely contains the ball game. And that hasn't been our case for uh, several years here, that we've had a true number one. Mm-hmm. Haven't had one in several years here. Whose side are you on, Bill? Oh, I'm on uh, Des Bryant's side on this one. Jerry Jones, maybe they haven't a 1,000-yard receiver in several years, but the last two seasons, over 16 games, uh, Des Bryant averaged 857 yards, catches, and seven touchdowns. No receiver on the Cowboys will be close to that this year. Jerry Jones needed to make a change and replace him, and he didn't do it, and now he's trying to make up for it. Woody Page? I'm buying Jerry Jones. He was absolutely correct. I don't know why in the world his general manager wouldn't go out and get a number one receiver for, oh, that's right, he is the general manager. He should fire himself. He's the one responsible that they don't have one. Clint Yates. Yeah, I agree. I'm buying either one here. This is like watching some couple you're tired of dealing with argue at a party. You think I care about what some guy who's not in the league says to an owner about what whether or not a guy's a wide receiver one just because you want to find a way back onto that roster? Why don't you worry about Jason Garrett making awful decisions at the end of games that you probably should have won, and then maybe you'd be in a better position. Forget and about what Des Bryant. Frank Isola. It's a low blow, and you know one of the things that impacts this is that uh, Dak Prescott is a good quarterback, not great. But guess what? The draft this year, mm -hmm. they could have drafted Calvin Ridley. He ended up going to Atlanta, and they already have Julio Jones. So Jerry Jones should look at himself. He could have drafted a number one receiver. We'll move on. Buy or sell two. Giants coach Pat Sherman. And in the case of Saquon, he's doing everything that you would want to see as a coach. He displays humility. He says the right thing, but when he says it, you, I think, and you all write about it and, and report on it, don't you sense a genuine nature to what he says? Coach went on to talk about other leaders in the league, and Carson Wentz was a name he invoked. How much of it is you think Shermer loving up his running back? How much of it is conveniently leaving out his two-time Super Bowl MVP and his highest paid wide receiver of all time? What do you want to answer that? I'm selling him everything he said there. He didn't mention that the most important thing that you want from a rookie running back is somebody who can run the football. They've got a free agent undrafted here in Denver that has more yards than Barkley does. Secondly, drooling over Wentz, why don't you talk about your own players? And third, we know he was going after Eli Manning and Beckham with what he was saying. Do you think this was a shot at those guys or at least they a... Cross the bow. Really? Clinton Yates, how about you? I just think this was completely disingenuous on every level. The reason why Saquon Barkley thinks that this team could still make the Super Bowl is because he's a rookie in the league and doesn't know any better. And so, of course, he's got that kind of optimism about what's going on with the season. He has to in order to stay motivated. It's disingenuous and it was incorrect in terms of his analysis of the situation. Frank, do you agree with Woody that this was a shot just because he didn't happen to mention Eli Manning? Or I don't no, think it's about it. Eli Manning. It's about a young player. He's looking at a young player in the division in Carson Wentz, and then he's looking at his own team. My young player goes on TV and kind of criticizes everybody out there. It's definitely a subtle dig at Odell Beckham, not so much at Eli Manning. Bill Paschke. I think it's a dig at the entire Giants team. I think translated what he's saying is this team is in chaos. We don't have a leader, so I'm talking about a rookie running back as being our leader, and I'm comparing him to somebody on a division rival for, for you know, uh, more or less. So that's, I think, what he's saying. You think it's a dig as well. Is it all right if it's a dig? I mean, the team's got one win. I mean, is it all right for him to maybe put the flame on him a little I don't bit? Think, trying to motivate I, you know, them? I don't think you do it with a rookie running back. I don't think you tie your, 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 your saddle to that. I don't, I know, I don't think that works. Ah, oh, you're saddled to that. How about, you like that? How about you like that? there? Yeah, Woody's the one who looks like he should be uh, riding on the saddle. <laughs> we'll move on. Last night in Nashville, home opener for the Predators and Banner Night. Not one Banner Night, not two Banner Night. Three banners raised, Central Division champs, Western Conference regular season champs, President's Trophy. All for a season last year that ended in the second round of the playoffs. Those Western Conference regular season champs lost to the Flames 3-0. Clinton, buy or sell three banners. Uh, I hate to sell this as somebody that not only just saw a banner go up here at the Capital One Arena, but also because it went up next to another group of uh, banners. There are uh, not one, yes. but two regular season championship banners for the Capitals. I'm sorry, Ted. You're the one who started this nonsense. It's awful. You can't have this much going on. So your team did it, and now the Predators are doing I hate it. it. You're selling it's it now. So no, no, no. I sold it. How about you? 
You know what? I don't mind the President's Trophy banner going up, but it's kind of like the Lakers and Celtics. They don't put up division titles. They just put up NBA championships. Way too many banners for a team that didn't lift the Stanley Cup. Flashkey. Are you guys kidding me? How many journalist bios have we read that says neighborhood backup sports writer second place of the year? We've had our resumes all the time. Everybody in this business, so they're padding their resume and they're doing it publicly. So what? They're celebrating something that, that they haven't been able to celebrate before. Let them do it. Let them enjoy it. Because we sure all do it. And I look at right. the bios that we okay. all do. Okay. Now we go to the man who's sixth on the Mount Rushmore of panelists from the Rocky Mountain region, Woody Page. <laughs> I'm totally in agreement with Bill. You have to understand, guys, I'm from Tennessee, he's from Kentucky. When we have a chance to put up a banner, we're going to do it. The entire time that I covered teams <laughs> in the South, I never got close to a banner. We only got participation ribbons. I like this. More okay. the merrier. All right. Look, to full disclosure here, Bill Plaschke, you are the seven-time sports columnist of the year. Is that that's right? my seven? banner, baby. Prove it. <laughs> I mean, so that's not second place in the uh, Orange County region. No, it's not. Ooh, Woody Page, 29. You got to love that for your points per game average, but that'll be a bolt here. Yates as well. Flashkey, I saw it. Go down next. Audiences around the globe have spoken. Venom has 